Welcome back to the garage. So continuing on the chronicles of trying to get this F100 running better, and I keep fixing things and keep running into more problems. So I did the oil change off camera and it was driving around the neighborhood, just trying it out after I fixed the carburetor. And now I come in and I have a puddle of oil. Now it's not the same puddle of oil I had before. The puddle of oil I had last week was transmission fluid, which turned out to be the rear seal for the transmission where the draft shaft goes in. Popped a new one of those in, that was like $4. Easy fix, great. I go to fire up today and then find a puddle of engine oil. All that there. Now upon closer inspection, my drain plug was loose. So either I'm an idiot and completely forgot to tighten that up when I did the oil change or it came loose. Now I'm gonna clean that up. Battery keeps dying on this thing even though I drove it around. Check the belt, it's super loose. I mean. This belt is just all floppy. So now I gotta fix that. I gotta charge the battery because now the truck is almost dead. Why do I work on these old cars? Charger charging the battery, yay. So I'm gonna go ahead and tackle the alternator belt and fix that while I'm here doing this before I clean up Exxon Valdez that happened underneath the truck. Oh, that's not even that tight. Now let's see about firing this thing up so I can tune it. a gush of fluid. I was prepared. I ordered two needle and seats and I didn't replace the rear one. But shame I may have should have done that in the first place. Meh. Smart charge and back to this. Uh, should I be running a charger when I have raw fuel just spilling out everywhere? I'd be alright. Got to let it idle there for a little bit, get it off the temp so I can adjust the car. But in the meantime, yeah, that's uh, that's my current project. Now time for the educational part of this video. Nerd glasses engaged. I let the engine get up to temperature for a reason. You drive around when you drive your vehicles at temperature. So the carburetor needs to be tuned while it is at temperature. If you tune it when it's cold, it's going to run too rich, it's not going to run right, it's going to foul out plugs, and that's not good. We tune it right the first time, we don't have to go back and change it again unless we make physical changes to the engine like heads, cams, and etc. Now to tune the thing, we're going to use a vacuum gauge. Now I picked this one up for Harbor Freight. It's okay, it does fuel pressure and it does vacuum. So it goes two ways, but I'll put a link to a different one on Amazon for you guys down below that I think would be a little better. This one's okay, but it does have a tendency to bounce no matter what car I put it on, no matter how well it's tuned, it always has a little bit of a bounce. Better quality vacuum gauge is okay. If you're doing carburetors on the regular, then it's worth it. But otherwise, eh, up to you. Now you need to think of the vacuum gauge as same thing as when you go to a doctor and they take that you know little shiny metal disc thing to set the scope and check your lungs, have you breathe in and breathe out and listen to you how you're doing it. So if we're gonna get an actual physical reading from the carburetor to tell how the engine's doing. Now to hook this up, you need to hook it up to manifold vacuum. Now there's a vacuum port in the side of the carburetor. You don't want to use that one. That's a no-no. You want to hook it up to something below the butterfly. So either a port directly into the intake manifold or on the very bottom of this carburetor, there are ports that have these little rubber boots on them that I can plug this into. And that's where I'm going to put this one at. If you unplug a hose to plug this in, you need to make sure that hose is plugged so it doesn't mess up something else. That's important. <laughs> if you have any vacuum leaks anywhere in the engine, this isn't gonna work properly. That's what I've been working on on this truck other than the oil leaks and stuff like that. Getting the carburetor so the fuels in and levels are set where they're supposed to be. I put new gaskets above and below the carburetor spacer. Made sure all my rubber boots were good, all my lines were good. That way nothing is sucking any extra air where it doesn't need to be because then this will not work correctly if you have any extra air it isn't supposed to be there. Now, if you can make a little hanger, hang it, it'd probably be the easiest so you can see it. I don't have anything, so I'm just gonna lay it off to the side here where it shouldn't go nowhere. To start this whole process, we need to make sure the carburetor's set to factory settings. As long as the engine will run off of that, you should be fine. What we need to do is set your idle mixture screws, which are located on the side of the carburetor on the metering block, this block that goes 
in between the bowl and the carburetor. There's this little screw here and the same one on the other side. Now, sometimes there are four on, there's two on the rear, two on the front. On this particular carburetor, there's only the front. The whole vacuum tank there is controlled through a separate circuit. We're not worrying about that today. We're only worrying about this. Now, depending on what size carburetor you have, depends. I've seen, you need to set those screws to a certain point, which will get you started. Generally, it will get to try your vehicle running and you can go from there. Now, I've seen mixed reviews on one and a half turns out or two turns out. What does that mean? So we're gonna take these screws and we're gonna run them down. This is our idle mixture screw. And we're gonna turn it all the way in. Now, not too much, we're gonna just nice and easy run it to it bottoms. There, don't cram on it, just nice and easy till it seats. And we're gonna set our base. So we're gonna back this out one and a half turns for this carburetor. So half a turn one full turn, half a turn. Now we're gonna do that on the other side. Now my carburetor is set up completely set to stock base. This 600 CFM carburetor is a little big for this engine, but it'll work perfectly for this engine. I've seen people throw 750 CFM carburetors on these 289s or 302s. They're too big, but they do work. You can make them work. You just gotta start jetting, things like that in order to fix that. But for me, in my case, I just want the engine to run smoothly and be able to drive around town. I'm not concerned about gas mileage or horsepower with this engine. I have a whole different setup later for that. Be sure to subscribe for that because the build I'm doing with this truck is gonna be badass. Can I say badass on, on YouTube? I don't know. If this correctly, I need to have the engine up to temperature and it needs to be in drive because this is automatic. I need it under the load to set this appropriately while it's under load. You really need to have a second person here to throw it in drive and hold the brake for you. I'm not gonna be doing that because it's just me. I've chalked both rear wheels, front and rear with rubber and wood. I know the brake stick on the truck a little bit and I'm on an incline for my driveway. So that was an awful lot of excuse just to say that I'm about to do something dumb. Call a friend. Well, I already tested it, it, it held. So as long as I don't wrap the throttle, I should be good. If you have a manual, you just throw it in neutral, chalk the wheel so it doesn't roll anywhere, you're good to go. So hopefully I don't run this thing into the back of the Mercury, which is currently sitting right there in front of me. Yep. Let's see how it goes. Now we're throwing 11 to 12 inches of vacuum right now on the carburetor. That's in park. I don't have it in gear right now. I think it's a little bit high, so I'm going to lower it down. You just need to adjust this screw right here. If you crank it up, engine goes up. Go down, go the other direction. If you go too low, you'll hear the engine stumble. Go back the other way. Sounds good. I don't have an actual RPM gauge, so we're doing it by ear. You can hear where it sounds where it's where it sounds a little more relaxed. You just gotta pay attention and really listen to it. So right off the bat, I can smell fuel coming from the exhaust. It's running too rich. So I need to turn the screws to tighten them down a little bit. When you back the screws out, they get richer. You turn it in, it, it gets leaner. I need to lean out of it. It's running too rich right now. Now from factory, these carburetors, almost every carburetor is set to be too fat, running too rich, too much fuel dumping into them. That's a safety measure to make sure you don't lean your engine out and blow it up from the get-go. So generally, most of the time, you're gonna have to screw them in a little bit. You only wanna turn them a quarter turn or even an eighth of a turn at a time. You really need to fine tune this. Take your time. Maybe you're gonna have to run it, get it set, go back, drive it around, come back and do it again. It might take a couple attempts to get this correctly. It's dry. It's definitely too low. It's gotta get come up quite a bit. 
as you do this process, you want to turn the screws equally. If you turn one a quarter turn, you need to turn the other one a quarter turn as well. It needs to be even, so that way the carburetor runs accordingly. As you turn each screw, keep an eye on your vacuum gauge. You should see them either go up or down. You want to have at least 15 inches of mercury vacuum. That will tell you if your carburetor is set correctly. If it is below that and you cannot get it above that, you need to look for other problems with your engine. You have a vacuum leak somewhere, some other noise coming from somewhere. There's, a, there's an issue you need to determine before you can fix this and final tune it. Anything over 15 inches of vacuum as stable is where you need to be. Depending on your cam, it might be a little bit lower if you have a really aggressive cam, but that depends on your particular engine. A vacuum gauge will tell you a lot about what's going on inside the engine. There's all sorts of charts online that show you the differences of what a needle bouncing up and down, the needles bouncing up and down versus if they're too low, too high. Now, I've never been inside this engine. It does smoke a little bit. I don't know if it's because it sat for five years and got some lifters that still need to work their way out. Well, I got the fresh oil in there now. Let's go around the block a little bit, see how much it dries. But already just off the throttle, just snapping it, it's ready snappier, runs smoother, idles nicer. It's really a big improvement from where it was. Now, it should be okay to drive around the neighborhood again, and we'll hope for the best if it doesn't try to kill me through suspension or other means. Definitely way better. Oh, it's a big difference. All right, let's come to the stop, see if she idles down like she's supposed to. Oh yeah, she's taking it. Still slow. A lot more noise than there is to go, but it's all right. We'll fix that. We'll fix that. Time, time, coming. <laughs> some work I still gotta put the seat belts in I got a new steering wheel got the new seats but you know what she's gonna start living outside so I can start pulling apart the mercury because I my issue is I kind of have ADC or something I don't know I flip back and forth I'll work on this I'll work on that I'll work on this I'll work on the Camaro I'll work on this I'll work on that so yeah I feel like a lot of us have that same problem now as soon as I can figure out how to get this window closed and I can test the locks to see if those even work because I didn't think about any of this before I decided to say hey I'm gonna let it sleep outside okay well, till next time, go work on your own cars. Peace. Don't forget to subscribe. <laughs>